What's up guys? This is Frequent here with Sound Design Tutorial 5. Are we on 5? I think we're on 5. Um, happy quarantine to everyone. Seems like a good time to sit down, talk about one of my favorite synths of all time, which is Faceplant. Um, this one is really cool. They actually just updated a ton of shit on this and fixed a lot of things that I absolutely hated about it, honestly. Um, and I, I've been kind of stalling on doing this tutorial because they keep just making this synth cooler and like fixing little things and adding new features. Um, the other thing is I, I feel like it's kind of hard to talk about this synth without talking about Serum also. Um, just because Serum... I think is kind of the de facto synth that pretty much every producer <laughs> uses these days. And th the first question I get is always like, why would I want this over Serum? Um, and I don't want to necessarily just pin it against Serum this whole time, but I want to at least address that question because I, I think a lot of people are going to be asking it. And I want to talk about the things that this does way better than Serum and then the things that it does way worse than Serum. And I think the overall answer to that question is it's not actually better than Serum overall, um, but it, it has a lot of options that Serum doesn't have, and it does some things uh, differently that Serum uh, really doesn't handle nearly as well. So, like, for instance, probably the coolest thing about getting a uh, faceplant is you get all these snap-ins, so you can put all these plugins in here in these uh, kind of just effect lanes, but you get all of those as snap-ins, so I can come over here and just pull like my kilohertz distortion in here in Ableton. So not only do you get every effect within this synth, but you also get all these effects kind of like outboarded onto your actual DAW. And you do have serum effects technically, but um, serum effects is a really clunky way to just add one effect. And also, it uh, if I'm being real, the serum effects aren't, I mean, they're all good for what they are, but um, they, they aren't that interesting. Like the filter is the best thing in serum, in my opinion. Um, but the, the rest of the effects are pretty standard stuff. Uh, Kilohertz has some really interesting things in here that you can play with that we'll get into in a second. Um, all right, so I'll shut up. Let's actually talk about what we can do in this synth here. So um, when you first open it up, it's just going to be blank like this, and you have generators, effects, and modulators. Um, obviously, if you want to make a sound, you got to generate a sound. Um, so off the bat, first thing that's cooler than Serum, you got Sampler right here. So you can put any sample you want and use it like a wavetable. Um, and I don't mean like it will convert it to a wavetable. I mean, this is literally a sampler inside of here that you can layer on top of actual wavetables. So that opens up a ton of possibilities. Um, I'm for now going to just go to the regular wavetable. Analog uh, is kind of, I don't really understand why this exists, to be honest with you. It's kind of just like wavetable, but you can only choose four things. Um, but like the default wavetable already has all those in like a smooth table that you can transition between um, and as far as I know everything else is the same I don't really I don't really get that but uh, wavetable and sampler are both uh, really powerful in here and then you have the noise which is just noise can be useful but um, you can also like load in noise onto the sampler they have noise wavetables in here there's a lot of ways to make noise in this thing um, so that's the essential thing here you get um, like one uh, generator and then it's going to be above this output and I can this is another huge 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 advantage over serum I can just put as many oscillators as I want in this thing um, I don't actually know the limit I've never hit it but um, basically how this is working is anything that's below the output is not going to be so right now we're only hearing um, this guy up here this kind of square if I want to hear the sign and the square I got to drag it up here now we can hear them both um, so anything that's above an output is going to uh, just go to the nearest output. So if I put another output down here, so now I can add output. Now these two will go to this separate channel, and I can even send this channel to like a different lane over here for effects. So I could have, like, uh, let's turn this down a little bit. We can have this sub just going out to lane two, and then on lane one I can put like a bunch of distortion or whatever. So now it's going to distort these ones, and then we'll have a clean sub 
under it, which is just one example of how uh, these groupings can be useful. But you can effectively create an instrument that has like 30 independent um, outputs and then like multiple synths on each of those outputs. I don't really know how useful that would be ultimately, but the fact that you can is pretty crazy. Um, so all that's well and good. Um, I'm going to delete pretty much, let's just delete all this actually and start from scratch. So let's put back in a wavetable and talk about what we got here. So pretty comparable to Serum. Honestly, you got wavetable, a bunch of uh, shapes you can add here. Um, you can also uh, do the wave editor. You can do a bunch of things in here. You can edit partials. You can um, like highlight the entire wave and crossfade it however you want. I, I haven't spent too, too much time in this thing experimenting, except for one function, which I find to be kind of the coolest thing. If we go and grab, um, well, let's just load the tipper wave. We got to load the tipper wave. Um, and then we put in... Uh, you can add the effects in here, some of them. So we can highlight this whole region and then add effects. You get all these different things. So we could add a comb filter, sync, rectify, all these different things. Uh, my favorite though is disperse. Um, I could probably do a whole video just on disperser. Uh, but this is a Killer Hearts plugin uh, that, that I think a lot of people know about more than Faceplant actually. Um, but if I add a disperser across this wavetable, you'll see it actually is going to like make this whole thing all gooey and offset so it'll like allow you to make um an even more interesting sound so let's actually do this on a, a saw wave so you guys can hear what it does really quick um pull this up and then i'll do it on the tipper for when we're going to make an actual sound um so we can go to these factory saws and just grab a saw sound something like that and then we just highlight the whole thing grab our disperse hundred percent and then we can just run that a couple times we can just go disperse it'll already be at a hundred and then we can just hit done so I'm just gonna run that one more time just keep on dispersing so now we'll have this like really gooey <laughs> so that can obviously open up a lot of possibilities, just like throwing effects into your actual wavetable instead of doing it on um, like, you know, this the actual output of the sound. You have kind of a more fundamental control that way. Serum has a lot of crazy shit you can do in there too. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say it's better in that regard, but you still have plenty of kind of unique flexibility with wavetables and processing them and all that sort of shit. Um, now let's talk about this. This is the thing that I think gets everyone pretty excited about this synth is the FM and I guess PM phase modulation possibilities that this opens up. So I can just take a wave here and then I can grab, um, like another wave table. Again, this isn't going to be playing cause it's below this output. Um, but I can take this and I can FM it. So you see this little green thing that shows up on any of these outputs. If I grab that, it will use this as a modulation source, which is insane. And then we can, um, unfortunately, you can only really go on four target destinations. There might be a workaround to do it to other things that I'm unaware of. But I mean, even just being able to put it on the pitch and the phase is pretty powerful because um, you can like in Serum, you're just restricted to doing like one FM step, like from A to B or B to A. Uh, but here we can just kind of create this insane tangled web of uh, FM and phase modulation and shit. So uh, I'm going to just apply this target by clicking it. So I click here and then I just drag. Uh, they even have like multiple pitch options. So you have like your traditional transposition and then you have like a frequency shifting pitch right here, which is uh, going to have a slightly different effect, but not too noticeable. And then you have AM, which is just volume. Um, and then my favorite is the phase modulation. This is really fun. Get some really interesting sounds that way. Um, so let's try, um, like, yeah, we'll, we'll put the phase modulation on there. Uh, we'll disperse this waveform a bunch. So again, just 100, doop, 100, doop. Sure, good enough. Well, let's play it.
it's just some like really unique timbres in there um so this is the the next thing we can also add uh, like distortions and filters into the generator section so we can use um like effectively this is all just wave shaping uh, so we can apply like this wave offset to this thing and it, it'll actually show you um in real time what it's reading so it's it's reading just the total output of anything above it so if we change this waveform you can actually see it affecting this distortion shape here because this is showing you basically this signal plus this curve equals this visually so uh, we can change our distortion types to whatever we want um, and then we can apply this out as like an FM source so let's try putting the distortion as an FM uh, I like to try both of these let's try just like the regular transpose interesting And I'll be honest, I have no idea why that's oscillating like that, but it sounds pretty tight. And you can also add DC offset to this. Um, so we can just change the bias here. Sounds pretty sick. Um, we can do the same thing with a filter. So this is something you like to do a lot is grab a filter. This is just going to grab your filtered input of whatever total wave you have. Um, again, it's not playing because it's not above that. Um, just to show you guys if I were to put this here though, you can just put a filter and this, this is, um, fundamentally like filtering the wavetable. It's not actually, um, it's different from if you put a filter over here because that's just actually taking the whole output and applying a filter over it. But this is actually like canceling within the wavetable itself. It's going to sound exactly the same, but it allows us to do um, this, which is we're going to um, take the filtered. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. I got to make sure this goes back there. All right. I got to take this filtered source. I'm going to add a huge cue. This is one of the things they fixed. They used to have no slope functions for this filter. So it was kind of like the worst filter ever. Now it's like uh, like the second worst filter ever. At least you can do that. It doesn't really have any flexibility other than that. There's no drive. There's no distortion. There's no morph. There's no like interesting filter shapes. It's super standard, but it's definitely good enough to get some interesting results out of uh, this shape because you can see just by sweeping with a peak how we're taking this and we're, we're generating like really dynamic weird waveforms from it um, so we can apply that out to the actual source sound so let's put this on the face Sounds pretty interesting. Uh, let's try playing a chord. Maybe a lower one. It's pretty sick. Um, let's try also I'm gonna lower the phase amount and let's put it on the FM also so you can have as many of these sources as you want on here start on the frequency chart Ooh. that's broken Interesting, and then I that is so bizarre. Um, so th this is really where I've fallen in love with this synth is I can get a really complex insane waveform happening 
without even applying I mean technically these are effects but I, I haven't added a single outboard thing so like at this point I could even just like macro a couple things close out faceplant and do it all in Ableton and use a combination of killer hearts effects serum effects stock effects any third party effects um, and that's what I'll do a lot of times is I'll, I'll just kind of leave this in the box and just let it exist as like this really weird initial waveform um, and then from there, it allows you to just kind of stack a ton of stuff on top of it and do interesting things. Um, but you can already hear this kind of oscillation that's happening because of the bias knob and we get different uh, interactions from this cutoff. Let's kind of start stacking some effects just internally in phase plant. Um, and we can, we can do stuff externally later, but I, I feel like most of what this video needs to be is showing off what you can do just in here anyways. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and add, um, well, well, first let's just kind of go over these plugins. Cause honestly, a lot of them are not very exciting. None of them are bad, but a lot of them are just like so limited that they're not very useful compared to even Ableton's effects in a lot of cases. Um, but some of them are really, really good. So my go-to like favorite things in this, uh, the stock distortion is really good. Fast Raider is another really good distortion. Um, the form and filter kind of is okay. Um, but the um, phase distortion is super interesting. Pitch shifter is very, very useful. Resonator is very, very useful. Even though the resonator is way simpler than Ableton's actually, um, I kind of like that because it, it's... Um, just way more like Ableton's is pretty convoluted. This allows you to do the thing way faster, but ultimately Ableton's is kind of better. Um, but anyways, reverser is really good. Um, and then the transient shaper is actually really good too. And tape stop is kind of useful. But other than that, a lot of these are just kind of your run of the mill effects that are useful within chains for various things. Like this filter is good to use if you need a filter in face plant, uh, but it's not going to really blow you away. <laughs> it's just a filter. Um, and that's fine because really what the, where this thing shines is not from uh, like any one effect just being crazy good it's it's the ability to i mean i could just sit here and add like 10 distortions into this channel i can have as many of any effect as i want and that's a huge leap from serum in terms of how you can design sounds because with serum you're super restricted you get one pretty ass distortion and that's it for your whole thing and um I mean, you can kind of use compression and then go outboard into Ableton, but it, it's really limiting compared to this because we even if we only have simple things at our disposal, it's the layering potential here that's really, really huge. So um, let's go ahead and just start throwing some effects on this. I'm going to add a fat trade. <laughs> Let's add um, another distortion here. I really like the fold back distortion. Pretty cool. Let's try adding. Um, like a disperser on this. Sounds alright. Let's try resonator too, just to give it, it's like pretty noisy right now. Resonator can give it some more harmonic value. Um, so here's actually something crazy they just added. Um, I'm pretty stoked they did this like just before I did this video actually. So they have their own OTTs now. 
if you open up, you can put multi-pass in here. Multi-pass is effectively just like a band splitter. It allows you to like split the frequency and add kilohertz effects, kilohertz, kilohertz effects into the uh, the splits, uh, which is whatever. I mean, useful if you're into frequency splitting. I don't do it a ton. Um, but where it's crazy is if you go into the browser here, you can go to dynamics, not or uh, the overachiever, which is a five band fucking OTT. Um, I like to use just this one. But we can change our crossovers and then when we close this up, we can go and just like boost the gains around and play with all the settings. start to um, minimize all these effects just by hitting this little guy right here um, and then just keep stacking so um, let's add uh, I don't know let's try what'd be interesting on this um, ring mod in this is actually pretty interesting Alright, so now let's say we just want like a clean sub to be layered with this super fucked sound. Um, so now I'm gonna add um, a new group down here because I don't I don't want these to play um, in this thing because it's if I add just an output below this, all this shit will play. So um, I want to basically just add a new group with a new output, and then I'm gonna add another wavetable above this one. And we're going to send this whole thing to lane two. Now we just have a big old sub under it. And then if I want to have, um, basically, you can see how it's sending here. It's going from um, lane one to lane two to lane three to the master. So um, I can put a bunch of effects on lane two if I want to process the sub and the thing together. So um, let's go in here and now like distort the sub into this thing. Jesus. Let's try Carve EQ. This is a super janky one. Um, it's basically you uh, just have like a multi band. It's kind of like a vocoder e EQ. It's just a super bandy EQ, and you just kind of scroll. Scroll to change the size of the thing you're making, and you just kind of sculpt. <laughs> when you hit the right harmonic on it, it sounds really nice. So if I just play the this chord, which is just like an E power chord. Uh, 
that sounds sick. So let's try, um, I mean, honestly, I'm going to not do anything outside of faceplant right now. Um, let's try just adding another, <laughs> like, really fat distortion on this. So I'm going to fold back again and just crank this. <laughs> Sorry. So also, I will add one glue compressor just to keep it from clipping. Turn this down a little. And we can play some higher chords. It's pretty sick. And then you can play with like, um, since we have a huge effect chain on it now, we can play with like the dynamics of the sound and maybe even like boosting some shit way early in the chain. So let's try doing this. get some more movement in there and then I'm gonna put just a filter way in the beginning and we're gonna add a big old booster roo big old booster roo come on get in there see what I'm saying now this is just like the most underwhelming filter of all time so um, now what I'm gonna do here's where um Here's where Faceplant eats a giant ass compared to a serum. So if you want to automate anything in here in Ableton, you have to assign it to a macro. Um, so you're pretty much boned if you want to automate more than, eight, I mean, how many is this? Eight things. Um, I mean, you can add multiple things to the macros. Um, and to be honest with you, automating more than eight things is maybe a little excessive. Um, in most cases at least to do it by hand <laughs> with a macro um like a lot of times if you're going to be modulating that many things you want to just start using like the lfos down here which i should probably talk about also um but for the most part uh if you want to change anything so like for instance i want this band to boost but i want this band to boost like way more so i want to duplicate it And I want these both to be the same. So I, I can't even automate either of these in Ableton right now. Like, you can't open any of the automation stuff. Um, like, none of this will show up when I touch it here. Um, so we have to basically assign both of these to a macro. Um, and then... Do, 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 do. Now they're good to go. And then now in here, we can grab only macros. That's all we can automate. So that's maybe even a little much. Let's just lower the Q and the gain on both of these. It's kind of cool to have two different shapes on it, too. Because um, these are going to add to just like a nice little nipple shape. That it's going to give it like a weird peaky resonance. All right, cool. Um, and then from there, we can start putting all these other things on macros. So... Um, an interesting one was this bias knob. So let's put it all the way on the bias and then just turn that all the way down. Maybe not all the way. Let's maybe restrict the range a bit. Uh, we also got to make it, um, how do you make it bipolar on the macro? I don't even know if you can actually, because if you uh, add an LFO on here and you want to make it unipolar or bipolar, you can do it there. Uh, but I don't even see that option. I don't know how I never noticed that. Um, but anyways, so let's say we want the bias to go from like there to there. Oh wait, we got to limit it even more. Damn it. All right, here, I'm going to, I'm going to redo this. So I'm going to put the bias at the minimum value I want. And then I'm going to add it, and then I'm going to put...
put it up to the maximum value I want by turning it up and then just turning this wheel up here to see down there where I want it to be, which is about there. Haha, <laughs> so fun. All right, and then now we're going to put a macro on this whole cutoff. Let's drop it. So yeah, it does it from wherever the knob is. So if you need to like do a certain range, you just have to do that little nonsense. But now we can just do the full range with it. Uh, yeah, so we have to really be careful now to get these oscillations right and like tune in all of these little things. I think it would be cool to put. Yeah, we should put this wavetable on there uh, just so we can have more control over this as well. Maybe even just put boat. Eh. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, so every note is going to have a different interaction with the distortion and the uh, DC offset. So we got to basically tune with these macros to each note we play. So right now this note sounds terrible. But if I play with um, this one here, which is the bias, we can get it to line up. And then let's play with this filter too. That's pretty beefy. Um, so yeah, the, the, obviously you're going to get a lot of like really muddy, shitty sounds out of this, but the sounds in between where all the harmonics kind of line up and give you these slight detuning oscillations, I love that shit. And as far as I know, there's no way to get any sounds like this in Serum. Um, like these super like janky distorted wavetables are pretty unique to this synth because of the way it allows you to like route distorted waves back into themselves and like affect the phase of things using other things. Um, it's really interesting and I, I find myself just getting lost in kind of all the options it gives you. Um, I, I know it's intimidating for a lot of people at first but I think if you just kind of start playing with it and layering effects even if it sounds kind of bad at first if you just kind of like push through and keep adding shit eventually you'll get somewhere interesting um and it, it does take some tuning to get these to sound cool so like if we want to do chords we have to tune it differently let's, like let's go up an octave try to find and again i at this point like there's so many things happening that it's really just a matter of like twisting these knobs till it sounds right Ooh, I love those tones. 
damn. We can also just ruin it in glue compressor. Alright, sorry. I'm getting carried away. I love this thing way too much. Um, but anyways, I, I really I really didn't even scratch the surface of what's possible with this thing. There's infinite possibilities in terms of like adding if you wanted to get into this, they have like all the custom LFOs that you can draw now. Um, you can um, obviously add as many of these LFOs as you want to. Serum does a good job of that. Um, but yeah, we just have so much flexibility in terms of the sound. Also, one thing, this is really important. I really like to use this global unison here and then bring down the detune and add some spread. Just get some nice natural stereo. Oh, also, where's that ring mod? Because that ring mod is doing a ton. That's so sick. Okay, sorry. I gotta I gotta do it. We're gonna put this on here. Oh Oh god, so cool. Um anyways guys, I'm uh, I'm going to go play with this thing for a little longer. Um but I hope that's useful for you. I'm going to try and uh make a few more of these little vids for you in quarantine. Um yeah, hit me up for lessons too if you want to do lessons. Uh I'm going to I'm going to try and make a little calendar system for that and make it a little easier to book lessons with me. But for now just email me um if you want to do that cuz I need no money. Uh, cheers guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.